Crazy Sock Lady podcast. My name is Kay and this is my podcast all about knitting and yarn. So much yarn to talk about today. It's going to be a episode jam-packed with yarn. This is Gracie Bell aka Moosey. It's storming right now. Not really a bad storm, just a little bit of thunder. So the dogs are a little nuts. So if you see a flash of what looks like a bear running across here and things flying everywhere. Don't be alarmed. There is not a bear in my house. It is just the German Shepherd freaking out. So I'm on the floor today because it's thundering a little bit. And Gracie needs cuddles when it storms. I think Chloe's hiding. <laughs> so we're just going with it today because it's been one of those days. It's been one of those weeks. It's Thursday, September 21st. And I really, if I don't record today, it's not gonna happen this week. And I don't wanna wait another week. You guys, I've missed you. It's been two weeks and I like to stick to every two weeks. So we're going with it, okay? Just bear with me today. <laughs> so like I said, it is September 21st. It's about 1 p.m. in the afternoon. We've had plumbers at our house. I mean, it's been a crazy, crazy day. Plumbers that showed up unannounced, I might add to hook us up to county water because we're probably the only house in the neighborhood that's still in well water which was nice because we didn't have a water bill but it was very iron a lot of iron in the water so anyways we are now hooked up to county water the plumbers were here the dogs were out of sorts i mean it's just been a day. it's been a day <laughs> but we are going to jump right in because we have a lot to chat about today First up, I do want to let y'all know that if you go to the down bar down below, you will find all of the links to where you can find me. I am on Instagram and Ravelry as The Crazy Sock Lady. There is also a group for the podcast on Ravelry. If you just search in the groups tab for Crazy Sock Lady Podcast, you will find it there. Um, but like I said, there are links to everywhere in the down bar below. Be sure to join us in the Ravelry group if you have not already. There is a lot of fun stuff going on over there right now. And we're going to chat about some of it if I can see my notes because now Gracie's sitting on them. Okay, she's so cute though, so it's all right. All right, first we're going to talk about the swapple swaps that are going on. The one with Angie of Camel City Dye Works has filled up, so thank you so much to everybody who signed up for that one. I love Angie's yarn and I know you guys are going to be so happy with everything that you get in that package. All right, so we have three other Swapless Swaps that you can join. These will be the last three for this year. So be sure that if you wanna participate in one this year, you head over and you get signed up. The first one is Wild Happy Collar and the money for that is due October 15th. Looking around, Moosey here. Then we have What the Flock and that is due November 15th and Truly Hooked and that is due December 15th, right? Yes, got everything right. And I've never tried um, What the Flock or Truly Hooked, so I am really excited to try both of those. I looked at their websites, there are links. If you go, you're interested in doing these and you go to the Ravelry group, there are threads for each of them that will give you full details, everything you need to know. And there are links to the Yarn Dyers websites if you wanna head over and have a look at maybe some of the yarns they previously have dyed to see if it's kind of the aesthetic that you like. I do want to show you guys, we had the Yarn Enabler Swap with Swap going on. Those have shipped. I've received mine. I'm sure everybody probably has right now. Um, if you have not and you want to be surprised, just kind of look away. I'm going to show um, the package. So if you do our Swap with Swaps, you will receive a package similar to this that will give you a list of all the colorways. <laughs> trash truck. What? Like I said, one of those days. Okay, so if you do our swapple swaps, you receive a package similar to this. It has a list of the colorways that are included. And here are the ones that came in this one. I know this is Sock Monkey and then her number two pencils. And look how pretty these are. I love this one. Such fun colorways. That is a gorgeous purple. That's purple. Yeah, that is a gorgeous purple. Okay, but yes, I'm so excited to, these will probably be added to my blanket. You know what's funny? All of the swapless swaps we've done, they're still in their bags in this basket. 
right here. I need to decide what I'm going to do with them. I might start a new blanket. No, that's a bad idea, right? But I might start a new blanket and have it just be the minis from Swapless Swaps. That would be kind of fun. I don't know. We'll see. That's a thought. <laughs> but anyways, yes, if you're interested in those, head over and check out the details in the Ravelry group. And next up, we have knit alongs. We have two going on right now. There is the Sock Crazy Cal. That is a year long knit along for any socks that you make throughout the year. Baby socks don't count, but any other socks, head over and get those entered because we will be having the next drawing, the first podcast in October. So coming up very fast. So you want to make sure that you have any socks that you've completed this year. If you're new to the podcast and you are just now joining, head over and get the socks that you've completed this year put in. All the details are in the chatter thread for that. Next, we have the Rhinebeck is Calling Cal, and that is a knit along for the Rhinebeck is Calling socks, the pattern that I have up on Ravelry available for purchase. And here is a look at the ones that I knit up for that. And I am still so happy with how this pattern came out, and I love, love, love seeing all of the ones that you guys are knitting up. So be sure to get the ones that you complete posted in the Ravelry group. Post your pictures in the chatter thread. If you post on Instagram, ha use the hashtag, tag me in the pictures because I am really enjoying seeing how this pattern is working up in all of the different yarns that y'all are using. And we did receive a prize in the mail for that knit along. The lovely and so sweet Shauna from Adelaide Cottage contacted me and told me that she had a yarn she thought would be perfect for this knit along. And she was not kidding. This is her Autumn in Rhinebeck colorway. Look how gorgeous that is. This is on her Golden Twinkle Base, which is a 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% gold toned Stellina. I've never used gold Stellina. This is really, really exciting. It is 100 grams, 437 yards. So Shauna sent one for y'all for the knit along and one for me. Thank you so much, Shauna. I seriously, this is gorgeous. You were not kidding when you said this is perfect because it is perfect for this knit along. I am so excited to knit some socks out of this or maybe a sock head hat. I don't know. What do you guys think? Socks or a sock head hat? I was going to cast this on like ASAP, but I think what I'm going to do, because Shauna said she has one she's saving to do while she's at Rhinebeck, and I might do the same because I think that's a perfect idea. It's the perfect fall yarn, and I think that would be so much fun. So I think I'm going to save it for the trip. Um, I'm only going to take socks or hats, um, very basic, simple easy things to work on for the road trip up and then while we are there and then the trip back of course so yes what do you think should I do a pair of socks or a socket hat let me know in the comments below what you think this should be I don't know you think it would look good for a hat for me let me know but I'm really excited to have this as a prize Okay, last episode, we had three giveaways. So this morning, I locked those threads and drew the winners. The first one is for the Amarathine socks, and we had 104 entries, and the winner is post number 17, and that is one nerd, and that's Jan from Colorado. So congratulations, Jan. I will go ahead and get your Ravelry name sent over to the designer and have her send that pattern over to you. Then we had two little prize packages, and I actually have an addition to add to both of those. So they are both Halloween themed. And recently I received a package from Ash of Vessel Yarn Co. And she sent some adorable, oh, there's a little skull crossbones, and the skull has a bow on it. I just now saw that, that is so cute. So she sent me two of these packages, and she had said that one for me to give away and one to keep, but I actually think I'm going to include them both because I think they are the perfect addition to these Halloween themed packages for y'all. So there's just one in gold and one in silver. And it's just a bag of little skull progress keepers. So 
So I'm gonna put one with each of these. And Ash also gave us a coupon code for her website. If you wanna get 15% off anything in her shop, use the code CSL15. So be sure to head over and check out her website and take advantage of that coupon code. And thank you so much, Ash, for the package that you sent and for the coupon code. All right, winners to announce. Let's see. The first one is the bag from J&B Crafty. And then you will also get some skull progress keepers. And we had 162 entries into that thread. And the winner was number 19. And that is Psycho Who Lockian. I hope I am saying that correctly. And that is Kim from Texas. So congratulations, Kim. If you would just get in touch with me and give me your full name and your mailing address, I will get this out to you ASAP. Next up, we have the package from Steel City Stitcher from Roberta. And this is this adorable Halloween themed package. And I'll also throw in some skull progress keepers. And we had 209 entries for that. And the winner is post 189. And that is Natalie West. So congratulations. If you'll just get in touch with me and give me your full name and your mailing address, I will get that mailed out to you ASAP. So congratulations to all three of our winners. Now this episode, we have three more giveaways. I'm just loving all these giveaways here lately. It is so much fun to just share the love with you guys. So the first two are patterns. The first one is the Cheeky Shy Socks by Audrey Brego. I'm probably butchering that and I'm so sorry, Audrey. But she donated a pattern to the podcast and these socks are absolutely adorable. I am going to try to remember to pop in some pictures here. I love the cuff on these. That is what immediately caught my eye about this pattern. So for this, I'm going to open up a thread in the Ravelry group, like always with the patterns. So just head over and answer the prompts and you're entered to win. The next one is the Icy Blue Fisherman's Hat. And that is by Karen Olivia. I'm gonna butcher that last name too, so everything will be on the screen. And this hat is so pretty. I love the color of the yarn that she used for this. So gorgeous. Eric's been wanting a hat this winter a new hat and I might show him this and see if he would be interested in this because I think this could be for men or women. It's just such a pretty and classic looking hat. So for this one as well, there will be a thread open in the Ravelry group. Just head over, answer the prompt and you're entered to win. The third giveaway that we have is the 3000 subscriber giveaway. What? Yes. We reached 3,000 subscribers. You guys are amazing. I am just blown away that more than 10 people are even interested in watching. I remember when I started this, I believe September 12th was the podcast first birthday or anniversary. I don't know what you, whatever you wanna call it, either one. <laughs> but when I started this, I, 10 people, and I was like, oh my gosh, I've got 10 people watching, what? 3,000? Come on. That's nuts. That is seriously nuts. I feel like the year that I have done this has pushed me to grow so much as a person, as a knitter, as a creator, in so many amazing ways. I have made some amazing, amazing friends through this process. I'm just blown away that it's been a year that there are 3,000 subscribers. There are just no words. So hopefully this prize package will just let you all know a little bit of how much I love you guys. I am so thankful for each and every one of you and that I get to chat with some of you guys, um, you know, whether you message me or we chat on Instagram or however, I, I'm just blown away. So blown away. So the package is pretty huge. I went through the prize package drawer. I've been gathering a little couple of things here and there. And I went through the prize package drawer and gathered some of my absolute favorite things out of there. Because I wanted this to be amazing. A really big thank you to everybody that comes back every, every couple of weeks. So we're going to just go through everything here. 
First, I will show you, I just received this since the last time we podcasted and I thought this would be the perfect addition because they are adorable. So this is from Missy from Minnesota. That is her Etsy shop name. And her name is Linda. And these are balsam sachets. And they're cats. Look at this. Look how cute that is. So she sent one for me and they smell so good. I've already opened them, but then I closed them back up because I just put some lavender sachets in my hutch with all my yarn. So I think I'm gonna put these back here. But these are so adorable and they have a little tag on the top for you to hang them um, or you could put them down in your project bags, whatever you choose to do with them. So this will be included. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys, I think a lot of the times simple, what you think would be a simple little addition to a package can sometimes just make the entire package. So when I received Linda's package, this is what the note was on. Do you guys, you know what this is, right? <laughs> of course you do. It is on a library card. What? I want some of these for notes. This is adorable. This is so sweet. I love this. Such a great little touch to a package. Okay, so this is the first thing that'll be in the 3000 subscriber giveaway package. Then I bought some Coco Knits small stitch stoppers. And these are the ones that I use that I get so many questions about where to get them, what kind they are. This is them. I apologize for the lighting. It looks like it might have gotten a little bit darker in here. Who knows? We're just going with it today. But yes, small stitch stoppers by Coco Knits. Some of those. Then one of these because I love these. Oh, Jamie is so amazing. So this is from Random Fandom Bags, one of her tea bag notion pouches with the clear see-through pouch. And then there is also a little house progress keeper and some tea in there from Jamie. And then also, and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to open this. So I'm going to include this. This was sent originally, I think for the Rhinebeck is Calling Cow, but when I was going through that drawer and picking my favorite things, this caught my eye. I was like, it's my collars. It has to go to the 3000 subscriber giveaway. So this is from Noble Character Crafts and the colorway is Flourish. Look how gorgeous. Has a little owl progress keeper. So that will be included. And then there are some teas in there as well that she sent along with the yarn. Let me just package this back up. Cause I hear thunder. I don't want the dogs running over here and running on top of anything that's open. <laughs> and the last thing that will be included in the 3000 subscriber giveaway is from Nancy of Laughing Stitches on Etsy. Laughing Stitches by NL on Etsy. This is the project bag that says socks on it. It's a drawstring bag with little sheep. So cute. So the 3000 subscriber giveaway will have the bag, the yarn, the notions, tea bag, stitch stoppers, and sachets. So I hope that this will show y'all just a little bit of how much you guys mean to me. I, I love getting to do this and if anybody is interested in listening to me talk about my knitting still kind of blows my mind. But I hope that this little package will just give a little bit back to y'all. So for that one, it will be open in the Ravelry group. You do have to be subscribed to the podcast, a member of the Ravelry group to enter. There will be some sort of a prompt over there for you guys to answer. And then you're entered to win. For all three of those giveaways, we will announce winners on the next podcast, which should be the first podcast that we do in October. Last couple of things for administrative Ravelry group stuff. 
Don't forget about the How Do Y'all thread. Be sure to introduce yourself. I love getting to read through those. And we also have the coupon codes thread. So if you are a maker, you can enter any codes in there. Or if you're looking to do some shopping, head over and check out the codes that have been provided. And lastly, the podcast email, crazysockladypodcast at gmail.com. If you have any questions, suggest suggestions, I don't even know what I was just going to say there, questions or suggestions, you can email me there um, if you prefer instead of Ravelry or an Instagram. All right, finished objects. There is one, but it's not here. <laughs> so I'm going to put a picture in here. And this is a pair of socks that I knit for my cousin. She's going through a bit of a rough time. So I thought that some rainbow socks might brighten her day and bring a little bit of sunshine and a little bit of a reminder of the rainbow after the storm, um, just to the hard time that she's going through right now. So those have been sent off to her. I knit those out of Knit Picks Felici in the rainbow colorway. I did them on my Addy 8 inch circulars, US size zero, and I did them 60 stitches. And that's the size that I usually do for Austin, and I thought that those would fit her well. So I did 60 stitches in a knit three pearl one ribbing on the front and back of the leg, and then on the foot, the top of the foot. I did have some questions because I did the Kirby Worby afterthought heel. So I had some people asking how I had done that with a patterned sock. So what I did, I did the patterning, I did cuff down, patterning on front and back of the leg, just the, the ribbing, because I wanted something that would be a little bit stretchy. And I stopped, I knew the how many rows I wanted to do for the leg. So before I was to where I wanted to put the heel in, I did four plain rows on the back side. The front side I continued with the pattern, but the back side I went ahead and did straight stockinette for four rows before I marked where I put the heel in. That way I was not cutting in where there was any kind of patterning, anything that could be messed up. So that was my tip for those. And I definitely think I'll do that again and not be intimidated to do it on a pattern sock because it wasn't a big deal. I just did four plain rows and then it was easy just to mark where my heel was and cut in later. All right, works in progress, since that's it for <laughs> finished objects. Works in progress, I have quite a few. Not everything has gotten a ton of love. I really have not had a lot of knitting time, I don't feel like. But in some ways, I think I feel like that because I'm working on so many things. So I'm working on this and then that, and just not a lot of progress is being made on one project. And I had started and finished the rainbow socks since the last podcast. So that took up a good chunk of time because I wanted to get them done and mailed to her. So I don't know, maybe I've gotten more done than I think I have. I just don't physically have anything here to show you today that's finished. The first thing I'll show you are my September Q train socks. These are my September socks. I've been doing the Naughty Knitwits year long sock knit along as well as Mina Phillips um, New York Sock Club collection. September's the last month, so this is the last one for that. And I've got these in my birthday bag from my friend Karen at my knitting group. And I've used this ever since she gave me an I don't know that it'll just be a birthday bag. I might just use it year round because it just makes me happy. Balloons on the outside, coffee and tea on the inside. It just makes me happy. So in here I've got my September socks. For this, I'm using Knit Picks Felici in the Punch Bug colorway. And this was out of the last collection, I guess, of Felici that they put out. So this may be something you can still get. I'm not positive, but I love the tones on this color. So I have one done, except for the heel. Still needs the heel. But here is this one, and I love this pattern. It is a simple, easy two row repeat. So it's very easy to memorize. The stitch itself is easy to do, and it's working great for self striping. So this one just needs the heel. I've marked, I'm gonna do an afterthought heel. I've got my gazillion 
markers on the back here. I've been marking every 10 row and then I have three, can't see it too well. One there, one there, and one there for where I'll put in the heel. I always put one on each side and then one marking the stitch that I will snip when I'm ready. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll go in here with this color of pink and that's what I'll start the heel with. So the next one, gotten a good chunk done. I'm ready to, I was working on this this morning. Austin had a doctor's appointment and then I had to catch the ferry. We had to wait 30 minutes for the ferry, catch the ferry, take him to school. And then I waited about 30 minutes for another ferry to come home. So I had a good bit of knitting time this morning. So I was about here and I did all this this morning between the doctor's office, the actual fairy knitting and waiting for the fairy knitting. <laughs> so much knitting done when, when you have to take the fairy. But again, I'm loving this pattern, absolutely loving it. So I just need to go in and count my rows here and then I'll mark for the heel. Hopefully it'll match up pretty well. We'll see. So I'm happy with these and I'm since they're my September socks, I need to have them done before the end of September. So they're kind of a priority. I have quite a few things you're going to see today that are a priority that I would like to have done by the end of the month, but it's already the 21st. So I don't know that it'll happen. And my mother-in-law is coming to visit. She will be here next Thursday, Thursday through Monday. So that'll be the second um, company that we've had this month, which is great. We love having company, but yeah. I gotta get going on my knitting if I'm gonna get stuff done. So this next one is in my Daisy Girl and Company bag. One of my favorites and my random fandom. So cute. So in here I have my Rhinebeck sock head hat and I am using Hedgehog Fibers in the Dragonfly colorway. There it is, all its gorgeousness. And I am ready for the decreases. I worked on this a good bit yesterday. I just, I wanted some easy vanilla knitting yesterday. And this is a project that is also a priority to have done by the end of the month. So I thought I'm just going to get a good chunk of it done. So here is this, and I showed this last episode and I talked about the ribbing um, with the sock head hat if you've done the pattern before i believe it's by kelly mcclure it is very slouchy and has you do four inches of knit two purl two ribbing i believe so what i did i actually did five inches and then i flipped the where the cast on was was down here and i flipped that inside and then when i started with the plain knit round i stuck my needle through the stitch that was on the left needle picked that up and then picked up behind from the cast on edge and just knit around like that so that it created a nice folded brim that is attached right there. So I'm really happy with it. I'm at seven inches right now and I think that's going to be good. Let's try it on. Shall we? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a little bit more. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I love the folded brim. Absolutely love this folded brim. Maybe I'll make it a little bit longer because I do want it a little slouchy. I think I might get a pom-pom for the back, I think. So yeah, I'm really super, super happy with this. I've done one sock head hat before and this one is my favorite and I think it's the folded brim. I think I'm gonna do this on every hat now. I just love how it feels. I absolutely love it. And you don't have the cast on edge that can kind of look kind of weird sometimes if you don't do a special cast on. I really like it. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do this on all my hats now. Eric's wanting a new hat, a couple new hats for winter this year. I think he wants a lighter, one that would be out of like a fingering weight yarn too. So I think I'm gonna do a sock head hat for him as well. So many things to make for this winter. Will it get done? Oops. 
But that is my, oh, the needles I'm yeah. using are an Addy Natural and they are US 2 on a 16 inch. So that's the needles that I'm using and I have my stitch stoppers. Those are the ones that are in the giveaway. They came in that package. Well, not the actual package I'm giving away, but my package of them. <laughs> now my hair is a mess. I've been thinking about chopping my hair off. I've been thinking about it for so long, but then I chicken out when I actually am like, okay, I'm gonna do it, and I can't do it. <sighs> I, I was really thinking like chopping into here. This is the longest my hair has ever, ever been. And I think it's kind of become a security thing. And I don't even know, that sounds ridiculous. But I've been thinking about cutting my hair to like here. What do you guys think? Should I be brave and do it? It would feel a heck of a lot lighter, I think. Who knows? Okay, next up, let's talk about my Road to Rhinebeck Mystery Knit Along. <laughs> guys ready just got this in my little woodsy beer bag that a friend made and the yarn that I'm using I'm not gonna show you guys yet just because it is a mystery knit along but I'll show you the yarn the yarn I'm using is knit picks swish DK in the eggplant and marina colorways and I'm enjoying this yarn I think this is going to be a very warm shawl I'm very excited. Hopefully it'll be cold enough in Rhinebeck to wear this and my sweater and knit socks and a hat. It's got to be cold, you guys. It's got to be cold, which it'll probably be cold to me because it's 88 degrees today. I think yesterday it said it felt like 92 with the heat index and it's the end of September. What? Oh, North Carolina. Okay, but Clue 3 was released this past Saturday, and I'm not done with it yet. Did not get a lot of knitting done this weekend. Normally I would make it a priority to have it done, which again, this is another one to have this done by October 1st. Don't know that it'll happen, but I'm going to show it now. So if you are working on it and you do not want to see it, look away. I'll tell you when to look back. It's on a shorter needle, so I don't know. I'm really not going to be able to show it that well, I guess. But here it is. So up to here was clue one, up to here was clue two, and then this is all I've gotten done on clue three. But I am very happy with it. The lighting is not that great in here today, guys. Sorry, but I'm really happy with it. And I've got my little sheet progress keeper from Melissa of Nitty by Nature. Yeah, like I said, it's on a shorter needle, so I cannot stretch it out. I could change the needle, but I don't really want to. I don't really mind having it on a short needle other than the fact that I cannot take it, you know, pull it out to really show you guys. But I am super happy with it. And this would be a pattern I would do again for sure. I love the textured sections here and then you've got some straight garter to kind of break it up and give you a little bit of mindless. And the textured sections are not hard at all. All right, so if you were looking away, you can look back. I'm gonna stick it back in the bag. And that pattern, I don't think I said, that is a pattern by Mina Phillip, Knitting Expat podcast. And I think there's only four clues. So I think the last one will be out this Saturday. If I'm, or maybe there's five, I don't know. I don't know, I'm just knitting. <laughs> I'm just knitting along as it comes. All right, next up in my One Sock Wonder bag. And speaking of, I mentioned before that I got this bag and then I, did not see a link in her Instagram, which there still isn't, but she has been doing auctions on her Instagram. I have not seen this fabric, this bag, but there have been a lot of other cute, cute, cute fabrics. So head over if you have been looking for one of her bags, she's doing auctions on her Instagram. And here I have my Rhinebeck sweater, another would love to have done by October 1st project. I need to start doing a lot of knitting if that's going to be the case. And I'm using my ball sack from Steel City Stitcher, my Halloween ball sack. It's working perfect. So the yarn that I'm using is Malabrigo Sock in the 
pearl colorway and ochre and I'm doing the old romance cardigan by Hohi Locatelli in case you have not seen that and you are new I will go ahead and show the picture and I'm close guys I'm really really close really I am I have three more inches of the stockinette for the body and then it'll be time for the ribbing on the bottom so here we are that's where I am. It used to be 18 inches from the underarm down before you start the ribbing at the bottom. So I believe I measured last night. I have three more inches, I believe. So I'm getting really, really close and I am absolutely loving it. Really, really loving it. I'm not going to try it on today because it's kind of warm in here. But hopefully, I would love to have it done by the next podcast. I don't know that that will happen. I still need to finish the body and then do the ribbing at the bottom, the ribbing you pick up all around the neck and down the front and do the neck band is what I'm gonna call it, I don't know. And then cuff on the sleeves. So I'm so close, but that's a lot of stitches to still do stockinette in. So the construction of this, if you have not been watching for a while, you start with these lace panels and they run all the way down both sleeves so you start there and then you're picking up stitches and doing the rest of the sleeves and then the body I cannot wait to wear it I know this is a sweater that is going to get a lot of wear I'm going to wear it right back and then after that it's going to get worn a lot I just know it and I actually I should mention this I had a lot of problems getting a gauge swatch, getting the correct gauge when I was swatching. I talked about that before. So I just kind of winged it and went for a size that I thought would work. And with blocking, I think it'll be perfect because the only issue is the sleeves. They're not tight, but they're a little tighter than I'd hoped for, but they're not like squeezing my arm or anything. But I wanted them a little looser, I guess. But anyways, I kind of figured out with all of the stockinette involved in this sweater and all of the purling that that has entailed that I think my gauge issues are with my purl stitches. My purl stitches tend to be looser than my knit stitches. And when you're doing a, an entire long row of knit and an entire long row of purl and you're looking at those, you can tend to pick out where your problem is. And I was seeing purl stitches the pearl rows were a lot looser so I did a little looking around on different ways to change that and in looking around to find different ways to maybe change how I was purling I discovered that that's pretty common for continental to have because I'm a continental knitter to have looser pearl stitches than you do knit stitches because when you are knitting I'm looking around to see if I have anything that I can even show you on right now I'm not really going to show you but I'll kind of show you on this but when you are when you knit continental I'm a mess here okay here we go when you're knitting your yarn is being held in the back like this that's how I hold mine and how I tension and then when you go to purl you're having to bring your finger down like this and when I'm doing that for whatever reason my tension is really really changing so I saw something somewhere about Norwegian purling with that you are always keeping your yarn in the back so I'm still always holding it like this and you're just catching it like you would have yarn over. Look up a video, Very Pink Knits is the video that I watched to learn. I'm, I won't show you guys and I won't do a tutorial because there are so many out there that do them so much better than I could. But Very Pink Knits is the one that I watched, a tutorial on Norwegian purling, and it was great. 
So for the last maybe 10, 15 rows, I've knit like I always have. And then when I go to do the pearl rows, I'm doing the region purling. And I think it's really, really making a difference in my tension because I'm keeping the yarn the same way that I always have it. I'm not having to bring it around front and constantly be moving my finger up and down because I don't know why that is making such an issue with my tension, but it is. So I can tell a difference looking at the last 10 rows. You guys probably won't. I mean, you won't be able to tell, I'm sure but I can tell the difference. Now, hopefully it's not going to matter that I've started doing that after I've done the entire rest of the sweater a different way. We'll find out. But I thought since I was doing so much purling, this would be a good time to pick it up. And if it made too big of a difference, like if it was loosey goosey and really, really tight, I would have went back and did it the original way. But I didn't notice it any worse than it had been. <laughs> so it's working and I picked it up super fast. I'm not as fast as I typically am when I'm just doing my regular pearl, but I think I'll get there. There are quite a few more steps to doing it, but I really am liking it. I, I don't know. I think I might do my pearls that way from now on just because I think it'll really help in big projects like this with lots of purling um, to keep my tension from getting all crazy. All right, three more things that I'm going to show you today. It's just a little bag that I made last summer or last fall sometime. And in here are Wyatt's red socks. And it's the Cascade Heritage sock yarn. Plain red. And then using up his rest of his bunny boy yarn and I showed I'm pretty sure I showed this one didn't I last episode the one that's finished and I have not gotten a ton done on the second one but I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys that I have done something on it I got the heel flap and heel turn done and I've picked up the gusset stitches and that's as far as I've gotten <laughs> So there we are. It has been worked on. This is going to be a project for Socktober. Have I talked about Socktober yet? Carolina Fiber Girls group on Ravelry. If you want more details, I'm excited for Socktober. I have so many socks to do and finish. I cannot wait. I think October is going to be all about the socks. So that's those. Nothing really exciting. Hopefully next time. Hopefully next time all of my whips will be FOs. Wouldn't that be nice? And they're like, we have some like whip fairies come along and like finish everything and get it done. I don't know. I love the process of it. So that wouldn't be that fun, I guess. But anyways, in my Sandy by the Lakeside bag, I have yet again, another pair of socks. This is my Biscott yarns in the Sorcerer's uniform. And here we are. That is what I've gotten done. I think I've gotten a little bit more done since the last time I showed you. I have marked for the heel. I would be a lot further, but I had split a stitch and it was a mess. So I had to pull back like six rows and fix it because it was not working. But yeah, I've marked for the heel. These are kind of my baseball practice which I did work on my sweater at Wyatt's baseball practice the other night but these are usually what I take whoops to baseball practice because they're on my chow goo nine inch circulars us zero and they're just so easy to just zip right along and work on very very mindless oh and I forgot to mention that for any finished objects works in progress if I forget to mention something or if you have more questions about something there is a project page for everything that you will see. Um, and if you have any questions still after looking at that, just feel free to send me a message. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. This is in my Lone Larch bag. And I have gotten here my Fingering Brioche Bandana Cow. And I've gotten started on the decreases. So I thought that I would show you guys. So this will be the front of it. This is the top. It'll go like this, but look a lot better than it does right now. <laughs> and 
And then this is the back where I have started the decreases. So for this, it is a fingering weight brioche bandana cow. <laughs> and the colors are not showing up at all. They're not showing up that well here. Maybe they'll show up a little bit better here. Still not showing true to color. The lighting's just awful today. But this is from Angie at Camel City Dye Works. This is Grey Goose on her Trinity base, which is a superwash merino cashmere nylon blend. And then this one is Wild Happy Color, who we do have the swap -a swap going on right now. This is Breaking Dawn on her Nurture base, which is an 80-10-10 superwash merino cashmere nylon blend. So I'm loving working with these yarns. It is super, super soft. This is a gift for my mother-in-law. So it has got to be done by the time that she comes next Thursday. So this is gonna be what I'm working on probably this weekend and hopefully getting it done so I can get it blocked and ready to go. But what you do with this, you work it in the round. Start up here, work in the round, doing brioche in the round to here. Then you're just going back and forth. And it's creating this little bit, which this will be on the back. And then it'll come down to a point in the front. And I think this will be perfect for when they're riding horses this fall. Something she can throw on with a long sleeve shirt or a sweater, jacket, hoodie, just to kind of keep her neck a little warm. So that should be done by next time, but it will have been gifted to her if it has been finished. So I will not have it. Sorry, I gotta stretch my legs out. I'm sitting on the floor today. <sighs> my knees are cramping. That's bad. Okay, but yeah, hopefully that'll be done. Gifted to her. I will have to show pictures or something next time. And I think that is it for works in progress. That was a lot. And those are my, my goals. Everything but Wyatt socks and the Sorcerer's Uniform socks. I would like to have done by October 1st because I would love for October to be all about the socks for Socktober. We'll see if that happens, I don't know, but I'm hoping it will. <laughs> I've got three packages that I'm gonna share with you guys this week that I have received in the mail recently. So the first one is from Faith of Four Boys Fiber on Etsy, and she sent me this gorgeous skein of ball yarn. This is on her firstborn DK. It is 100% superwash merino, single ply, 270 yards, and the colorway is Oklahoma Sunset. Oh my goodness. So I have never used a single ply. And this was a use for a giveaway or keep or um, you know, whatever I would choose to do with it. But I'm gonna keep it. I'm sorry I'm being so selfish with it because it's gorgeous, but I've never used singles before, ever. And I want to use singles so bad. I wanna get singles for the Oracle shawl. I wanna use um, some singles yarn for that. And I think this is gonna be a hat. Yeah, it's gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and faith also sent some candy corn stitch markers how cute are these so head over and check out faith's shop on etsy she also gave us a coupon code it is sock crazy and that will get you 10 percent off until october 31st so head over and check out her yarns she has some absolutely stunning collarways and you are probably going to see this as a hat soon because I'm just dying to work. I don't know what the appeal has been lately with singles for me. I think it's because I've never worked with them. I'm just dying to do a shawl in singles, do a hat in singles. So I am excited to get this worked up. Next, I have a package from Jamie of Random Fandom Bags. And I cannot show you all of it because I did a special order with her for a few goodies that are a surprise for some people. So I 
to show them yet, but I'm going to show you what I can show you now. <laughs> so along with my order, she sent, she said she watched the last podcast where I said I did not have a lot of Halloween bags. So look what she sent me. Oh my goodness. Look how cute this is. This is going to be used all of October for Halloween, of course, and it's October as well. And oh my gosh, I might actually put my sorcerer's uniform socks in there. Let's go ahead and do that so you guys can see how they fit in here. Because I think that this bag from Jamie is going to be amazing for socks or even a sock head hat. It's going to be perfect. Let's put... Do you guys... Do you guys use stuff like this for your notions? I bought these tiny little mini Altoid tins the other day and gave them to Eric and I said, eat the mints so I can have the tins. Not a huge Altoid fan, but I love using these for my notions. I don't wanna dump everything. I just, I don't know. I love using little boxes like that. Reusing them and finding a purpose and they're perfect for notions. Okay, that's adorable. Look at that. They fit perfect. And I think I'm gonna keep these in here because Sorcerer's Uniforms, Harry Potter, Hedwig, Owl Bag. So cute. Oh my gosh, it's just adorable. You could like hang this somewhere and just knit. I could put this on my lip. No, it wouldn't fit on my elliptical, would it? Because they move, so it would be moving. Maybe there's somewhere I could hang this on my elliptical. All of y'all that knit and walk on the treadmill, knit on the elliptical, I'm jealous because I can't do that. Maybe I'll try though. But I'm gonna have to switch my notions over to this. Look at that, oh my goodness. One of our tea bag notions pouches with the cute owl. I just can't get over, I cannot get over Jamie's items. So well made and so adorable. These are just my favorite things ever, I think. I love them so much. So yes, Jamie sent me these and she also sent a little witch's hat progress keeper and a few other little goodies. But I had to show you this. Like I said, I cannot show you the other things I ordered because they are a surprise for some people. But I I love this and I'm so excited. So these are gonna stay in here. I'm gonna switch my notions over to this as well and use my witch's hat for my sorcerer's uniform socks. So I'm excited to get those switched over. Let me set that over there so that I don't forget that I need to switch all the stuff over. Hide the little goodies that I cannot show you. And last package I'm going to share with y'all that came in the mail. This came from Lori of Arkansas Yarn Co. And here is her, her card with all of her info. She is on Etsy. And I cannot get over this yarn. I got very emotional when I opened this yarn. Very emotional period that Lori wanted to dye this yarn. She contacted me and asked if it would be okay to um, dye a skein of yarn after the Crazy Sock Lady podcast for her famous podcasters series. series. What? Yes, that is amazing. That is so much fun. Of course it's fine. So I received the yarn in the mail this week and I'm blown away. She absolutely nailed it. I mean, it is perfect. It is spot on. So here, I have to show you this too. She sent a card. These fierce looking ladies with their knitting needles. So much fun. And inside it says swatches. We don't need no stinking swatches. How cute is that? <laughs> Who likes to swatch? Not me. So there's that. And now for the yarn. You guys ready for this? So can you guess what two colors are in it? I'm sure you can probably guess. So 
So this is called Miss Kay's Socks. I'm gonna open it up so you can see it too. But oh my gosh, look at that. And again, there is her card. What? This is perfect. So here it is, all opened up. And oh my Lanta, look at that right there. Those right there, green and purple. Yes, yes, yes. She nailed it. Lori, you did a great job. Oh my goodness. Can't even, y'all, I can't even. So again, this is Miss Kay's Socks and it is in Lori's shop right now on Etsy. Head over and get it. She's got it in this base, um, which is her 80-20 Superwash Merino Wool and Nylon Blend. It also has it in a sparkle base, which is so pretty as well. So head over to her Etsy shop and get your hands on the Crazy Sock Lady Yarn Miss K Socks. Perfect, Lori, thank you so much. So that will wrap up all of the knitting talk for today. So if you were just here for the knitting, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, if you stuck through the episode until now, thank you so much for watching. Um, it was a little bit crazy today. Lighting is not great. But I, like I said, it's just been one of those weeks, one of those days. So thank you so much for sticking through with me. I appreciate it. Um, if you are a new viewer, thank you so much for checking out the podcast. I hope that you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe and give a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content of the podcast. It lets me know that you did enjoy it. And it also helps get the video out in the recommended areas on YouTube to other people who may be interested. Okay, chatter. Uh, we've just been busy the past couple of weeks, it seems like. Like I said, I don't feel like I got a ton of knitting done. Wyatt's been busy with baseball. They have practiced three times a week which a couple of those have gotten canceled and his first game actually got canceled because of rain. So he's supposed to have his first game this Sunday. So we'll see how that goes. He's such a tiny little dude out there. He's in third grade. There are a lot of fifth graders on the team. I definitely think he's the youngest and he's the tiniest and it's adorable. Makes me nervous as a mom. I think though that he's out there playing with the older kids, but he is really enjoying it and that is what matters. So we that has kind of kept us busy and on our toes. Um, my mom was in town over the weekend visiting. She left on Tuesday. We went to Beaufort, North Carolina over the weekend and walked around and had lunch at Clawson's. And I have just felt exhausted this week, just drained. I don't know what it is, if it's just because we've been so busy lately, but I have just felt really exhausted. I don't know because I'm getting seven, seven and a half hours of sleep at night. So I'm getting plenty of sleep. I just have been really, really tired lately. I think it's just the going nonstop that we have been doing and hopefully things will kind of calm down for the next week. And then Eric's mom will be here next Thursday. So we'll be right back to being busy again, but we love having company. That's super fun. And I know it's always going to be a good time when she comes to visit. And the kids are really excited about Nina coming for the weekend. But yeah, thank you for sticking through with the episode today. It's still storming, so I'm probably going to get off here because it seems like it's getting a little bit louder and have a feeling the dogs are going to start freaking out. Um, but yeah, it was just a crazy week. I had a doctor's appointment yesterday. My mom left Tuesday. I had a doctor's appointment yesterday, which was Wednesday. Then Austin had a doctor's appointment this morning, and the poor kid had to get three shots. So... That wasn't fun. All right, it is 2.30. I think I have chatted long enough. So I am going to get off of here and clean up this mess of a room and get something to eat because I'm starving. I didn't really have anything for lunch today and I am so hungry. So I'm gonna go get something to eat and clean up and I will talk to you guys in a few weeks. Thank you so much for joining me today. Love y'all. Have a good couple of weeks and I hope you get lots of knitting done before I see you again. Bye. Mm -hmm.